there is a number. Let me give it to you. It's one three one two six two six six seven nine nine. And then you'll need the meeting ID and the passcode. So I'll give you those as well. Yes. Yeah, the meeting ID and the passcode is what's at the top of the agenda, but I can give it to you if you need it. The meeting ID is 830 3810 3422. And the passcode is 00. 8836. It says Brian is connecting right now. It says Brian is connecting to, hold on, let me look. Uh, where'd you go? Hello. Hey, how are you? Uh, doing pretty good. Just finished moving 50 boxes of Girl Scout cookies or cases of Girl Scout cookies and moving our office today. So <laughs> oh boy. Did you sell um, most of your cookies? Uh they're almost at their goal, actually, but I still have, I mean, I think we still have like 80 cases who sell. Wow. So. But they're only, I mean, they're not even a full two weeks into cookie season and they almost met their entire goal, which was double last year. So they're doing awesome. That's great. Congratulations. People are pretty nutty, including some of the competitive parents for cookies. <laughs> I sent an offer letter to your former intern today. <laughs> oh, good. I hope she accepts. You, you really like Mia. Yeah, I met her on Zoom. She seems awesome. Uh, and then I wanted to offer her an internship right away, but our HR person went out for a couple weeks unexpectedly and I was trying to get his approval. And finally I was like, we're just going to have to go ahead. <laughs> we can't yeah. Because she'll get snapped up by some other community. 
So yeah, she's very knowledgeable in the area for only being like a you know, even last year when we had her as a freshman, I was really amazed at how much she had. So I felt bad making her like shred papers and (laughs) file for us and give her absolutely like, I don't know, Steve found some, but I would say about 10% of her work with us was actual experience in her future career. So that's okay. I always warn our interns in their interview. I'm like, a lot of what you're going to do is going to be very boring. (laughs) Do you (laughs) want to dig through files from 1960 to figure out what we used to have on this property? It's very fun. (laughs) So <laughs> everyone has that. It's a rite of passage. <laughs> yep. One of my internships in graduate school is to write the minutes for every city meeting that the city of Iowa City had. Yeah. And it was pretty boring because it was just writing minutes. But I feel like I learned so much because I was like, oh, this is what this committee does. Okay, now yeah. I understand. Like it was it's a good education. <laughs> yeah. They just recorded them and then I just could do it in my own time. So, all right, we have 10 members on this committee. We need six for a quorum. Um, One, two, three, four, five. Um, Brian, I just talked to Brian. He's, he can hear us. Can we hear you, Brian? Okay, I think Brian, is only listening and so we still need so I see Sonali hi Sonali or I see she's here hi I'm here. Okay, hi. Um, so we're yeah, Brian of- just says like connecting to audio on my side. Yeah, he just called me on my cell phone. I I know he had something that came up, but he was still gonna just try to call in so he could be counted in here for mm-hmm. attending. Um, we need wood still are you texting her Abby or you want me to text her do you, if you have her cell phone in your phone that would be awesome thank you mm-hmm. Okay, I just text her. Okay, because I don't think we can count Brian unless he can talk and hear us. I feel like that would really be skirting the rules. Kendra, you work with Melissa Bozy. <laughs> yeah, she's great. I miss her so much. I would, I, she would leave a big, big spot empty. She's got a lot to offer. She's really great to work with. Yeah. Yeah. She was a lot of fun. She was my favorite person at City Hall to talk to because she likes to read and she would always make really good book recommendations. The other day, the day that Middleton had off school, I went, I took my kids downtown to the bubbler at the Madison library and I texted her and I was like, which office building is yours? I want to look at like where you work. I want to see. And then she was like, oh, if you're at the Madison library, you have to go up to the third floor and see where I'm getting married. And so I went up there and looked at it and I was like, oh my goodness. Like I stepped out of that elevator and it literally was so beautiful that it took my breath away. I was like, this is awesome. (laughs) I would never have thought that they would have that as event space. Like you don't think of that as being an option, 
but I remember she was when because she, she's been talking about planning the wedding and then she mentioned that and I was like that's crazy but I haven't been up there to see it I should go see it yeah there um the ceiling has a public art installation and it's like it looks like it's like wood but it's cut it's like laser cut so it's got this cut out design and it like hangs a little bit lower and it's it's painted white and it is like it sort of looks like like lace or something on the ceiling it's really beautiful that's cool i'll have to go look at it where is the remote Charlie? where's that remote aaron i know right <laughs> for kids <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna dare. Oh, my husband. Oh my boy. Husband, I know my husband has them on his desk. Okay, Maria. It. Maria said yes. I'm sorry. Okay. So it sounds like she should be logging in in a minute. Okay, cool. Then we'll be. Are those here. the Harry Potter jelly beans? Yep. Birdie bats. Yep, it's a yellow one. Oh, hopefully it's buttered popcorn. Ooh. Those are good. <sighs> Not bad. <laughs> the fish one is so bad Ew. like fish they really captured the fish and it's so bad what's that one the dirt the dirt one is exactly yeah like yeah just my daughter got the dirt one. yeah oh. my daughter has the worst luck she always gets the bad ones i tend to have the better luck i'm like oh, i'm done <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's good. It's lemon. Mm -hmm. All right. It looks like Maria's here. Yay. Okay, cool. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're good. All right. Let's get started. Okay. So we have not met Brian yet, but since he does not have audio, then he can give an introduction next month, perhaps. Sounds good. So shall we move on then to, oh, I forgot about approving the minutes. So sorry. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from last, or I'm sorry, January? I can make a motion. I read okay. them. I approve them. Second. I'll second. Okay, second by Kendra. All right, so the motion passes. All right, let's go on then to our biggest upcoming event, Art Walk, and give some updates on that. Who wants to start with updates on Art Walk? Do you want to start, Meg, or do you want me to? Um. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> Can you give me That's some good framework? <laughs> well, um, done a lot. Yeah. Why don't you start, Abby? Okay, I was just gonna quick pull up my email that I sent you guys with the numbers. Hold on a second. So we each just go through the pieces that we've been working on? Sure, that'd be great. Start with you, Abby, and then we'll kind of go from there. Here, why don't I just pull up the Google Sheet? All right. Okay, so um, as of right now, we've accepted, I think about 20, 24 total, but of those we're waiting on payment still from seven. So we have 17 artists who have been accepted and have paid. So they're considered fully accepted and they are now listed on the city of Middleton Facebook page. Um, we created an event for the art walk. So if you haven't seen that yet, go on and click that you're going and share the event with other people. And you can see the list of artists that are fully accepted. Um, and then we have, uh, so we have 24 total. Um, 
Let's see. I'm trying to think. Meg, do you want me to go to one of the other tabs that you can talk about? Oh, we received some sponsorships. Is that in the budget tab? Uh, yeah, I did create a new sponsor tab. Okay. I just I don't have an amount under Willie Street Co-op. Okay. Yeah, so um, I think we had previously told you about the CDA agreeing to sponsor for 2000. And then Michelle Phillips went and made a pitch to the Middleton Tourism Commission and they agreed to sponsor for 1250. And then um, Aaron and Meg took the lead on um, working on a list of local businesses and preparing letters and they sent out sponsorship requests and they had various levels that were listed um, and what it would get you for each sponsorship level and they were so far able to get about 1050 on the Willie Street sponsorship we don't know the exact amount yet because they just checked the box for I think it was 200 to 450 but we haven't gotten the check yet no the amount um here let me let's see let me pull up the facebook events so you can see that i will say for sponsorships once i have time this week once our office move is complete like i'll go in person um meg had given me a digital copy of the letter so i can actually just print it and take it to people and we'll we'll round up some more people I know there are a lot of people that just see it in the mail that sits on their desk and they completely forget about it. But if you go in in person, they're like, oh yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like the amount is attainable enough for even like a small business to be able to participate. Um, so yeah. this is the Art Walk event and Meg had suggested that I begin to start featuring like some of the artists to give them each their own call out, which I know we had agreed to um, in the form that they filled out. So that's something that we're gonna need to start working on. Um, there is a list here so you can see these artists. And then we've also included um, a list of the sponsors so far. Mm -hmm. And let's see. We have actually started to get some good responses. We have, let's see, we have 16 going and 62 interested. Um, and then what else? Let's see. Oh, I, another thing is that the Middleton Public Library is going to let us use their display case in May to advertise the event. And so those artist call outs that we do, um, we can put those onto like a little display board or something. And then I was hoping that we could actually get a piece that the artist is going to be showing or selling um, that we could actually display like maybe eight or 10 of those total. So that's something that I need to start working on. Um, okay, take it away from me, please. I'm, I'm really struggling. I've done like, wait, I've done too many projects today that are like completely unrelated to this. So I'm, help me out, guys. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, we, do, we won't make you do all that on your own, Abby. So we'll work with okay. you to get the bio and the feature on the artists. Maybe we can like draft up a, make it look kind of nice and pretty, even if it's just on eight and a half by 11. And then That'd it could be great. like posted next to their artwork somehow in the display case. We'll figure that out, I guess. I guess. We yeah. Need to and even for the Facebook, if we had like a little cute little whatever, maybe we use one of the ones you did in Canva. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they, did we have that on the form? Um, most shows include like an artist statement that they have to submit with it. So mm -hmm. anyone most people should have that to just drop in there if you wanted a little blurb, you know, don't. attached to every artist. Maybe Erin should be our guinea pig and we'll be her first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you mine. <laughs> yeah, we should include that on there. That's smart because then it would save us having to mm -hmm. track it down later for stuff like this. It's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, most we could people even just ask have them it on hand. Submit a photo of themselves and then we could always already have that ready to go to drop into Facebook too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay, so let's see, what else are you working on? Uh, so I can update the food stuff is pretty much <laughs> no updates. I've, um, I got a list of all the Middleton Chamber restaurants and then I added in personal like friends and clients that I know owners of. I've contacted 36 different restaurants in the Middleton area. And I only received one response after two rounds and that was Freehouse who said that if we move the event, you know, after construction's done for to the green space in the future, they'd love to be part of it and kind of open up their patio and arrange that way. But that there's really nothing they could do without an electrical connection as far as setting up there. So I think that with no other responses, if we really want food there, we're at the point of needing to do like a food truck um, so that's I where we're at. I, agree with that. with I think that's a good idea. But didn't you say the fee was really high, Abby, that the city had set the fee pretty high? Yeah, but if they're at the tap, I think they're exempt from that. Okay. Okay. Do they and need there is electric, electric with that? At yeah. the tap, yeah. There is they electric. Can? Tap. Okay. Okay. okay, well, I'll go next. Oh. Okay. Um, so we have ordered some porta potties. That's pretty exciting. Um, we <laughs> um, have scheduled music. I was in charge of that, and I have Blue Spruce and the Alfa Romeos coming. Um, Alfa Romeos will be playing first, and then Blue Spruce will be playing in the afternoon. And our music is from 11 to 4. Um, let's see what else. I've been talking with the high school about doing a display and they are going to be getting back to me in April. They do a student art exhibit at the school and then they'll be getting back after that to figure out what we're going to do, where we'll, where we'll put them, what their display will look like. Um, let's see what else have we been working on. Demonstrate the high schools. Students, sorry to interrupt, Michelle. Did we ever decide if they're going to be it's high school selling only. or... No, they're Are not they going to be, be selling. I told them that okay. they, if they wanted to sell, they would have to have a booth space um, and that it would just be display only. And they're fine okay. with that. Um, they're super excited to be a part of the, of the art walk. So that's good. Um, they, uh, I believe it's around, around the second week of April that they have their exhibit. Um, so we should, after that, you know, work on what we're going to, where we're going to place them and what it will look like. Um, also, the students um, that are doing the Our City Project at the Youth Center are really trying to get their project done <laughs> to have it displayed at Art Walk. Oh, cool. Um, when I mentioned it, they were very excited about that. So they're working hard to get it done. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll have it complete before then. Um, so I think that's the things I have been working on. Do you want to talk about demonstrations, Meg? Um, sure. So we have, um, for sure, we have four demonstrators right now. Well, that's, I think we, for sure, I should say, I think. Okay, we have Melanie, the chalk artist, who helped us at the pop-up summer fun events. Very affordable, and she has awesome artwork, um, and she is getting extra chalk so the kids can color with her. Um, that is included in the budget of $75 an hour. And then um, Aaron's friend Ross is going to be doing chalk as well for free. I kind of feel weird about that. Maybe we should pay him something. Um, I asked him and he said like, just no. I asked okay. him and like, you can just set a low budget. And he's just like, no, happy okay. to do it for the experience, so. Okay, okay. Um, we have Lindsay Swalswidell. Am I saying that right? She is the same artist who helped us with the canvas over good, at the Good Neighbor Festival. And she sells a bunch of stuff at Regal Find as well. Um, she's going to be doing caricatures. And she, I think I put a note in there. I think she can get like five or six done in an hour. I think it might say. Oh yeah, I think it was back there. Yeah, five to six minutes per face, sorry, okay. So if there's like a, a family, then it would take a little bit longer, but um, we have her for three hours. And then we have the glass blowing 
artist who was here for the last artwork walk, Terry King, he's coming for four hours. So those are the ones that we have for sure. I emailed Triangular Door today. Um, Luabov, I think he pronounced his name, pronounces his name. And I haven't heard back from him. So I'll let you guys know how that goes, but hopefully we can get him. And then the thought with his artwork is he likes to repurpose recycled goods. So we're going to go to the recycling center, pick something out that's unconventional unconventional that he would paint on. And then we would auction off the final piece to raise funds for the Middleton Youth Center project for next school year, which he seemed really excited about. So he might want to help us with that as well, but he is, he's our most expensive artist. So we have to see if we can make that work financially. So yeah, that's it for demo artists. Um, I need to get ads going. We're, I think we've, we've kind of cut down our ads quite a bit just because of funding. So we need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, six ads plus Facebook. Um, so I need to get start getting those laid out and sent to the pub publications. And then what else do we need to do? I think that's pretty much it. I did the event listings. So oh, we're gonna extend the deadline and I need to update the form. We're gonna take that out to Friday, April 8th, I think it is. April 7th or April 8th, it's a Friday. Okay. So because we our goal was to try to get 50 artists total. Um, we do have some additional ones coming in. So we had three that I had sent out to U3 a couple of days ago. I think I heard from I heard from you, Meg, and I heard from you, Aaron. I wanted to make sure Michelle was cool accepting all three. Um, but we have subsequently, I got two photos emailed to me and I replied back and he said that he had mailed his application. Um, and I haven't gotten it in the mail yet. And I think that there's one other one. Um, and then the flower art person, um, I was working with her and I thought we had worked out a solution and she mailed in her check, but then she decided to bail because she's too worried about being outside. So I need to send her her check back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm, that's a bummer. That was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And she started making cards too, and they're Madison cards and they're really cool. Um, so I don't know, I should refer her over to Jessica Regal to sell her stuff at, at Regal find. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So I think that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. At some point, we're going to need to start um, getting volunteers lined up. We know mm -hmm. Dan Barker had sent an email from the CDA and he wants to volunteer that full day. Mm -hmm. That reminds me, we do have one other volunteer, um, one other person that's contacted me um, to volunteer. And also um, the Historical Society wants to do something during Art Walk and we have not worked out details of that, but they also want to be included. Um, I did see on the Chambers newsletter and uh, the Cross Plains Chambers newsletter that they both uh, included information about Art Walk that I had sent them. So that's good. Um, I think that's it. I just, that just dawned on me. So. Um, one thing to put out there, my friend that does pottery, she's one of the other Girl Scout parents um, at Donzu, am I pronouncing that right? Mm -hmm. um, she didn't feel comfortable applying as an individual artist because this is more or less become like a stress relief hobby for her throughout the pandemic, but she's really good. Like she'd sell a lot. Um, but she said that like collectively, if Donzu could have a booth, that that would be a possibility. So are we open to that? Like yes, artists having a collective booth? They did email me and I was like, please do apply. I think that would be awesome. Um, but that's been a couple weeks ago and I haven't gotten an application from them. I also okay. got a call from the Midwest Ballet School. I think it's called. It's the one that's above the uh, Hertz Donuts and on Oh yeah, we did the design. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they gave me a call and they wanted to know if there was a way that they could participate. And it sounded like they really wanted something at their at their site. And I was like, oh well, that wouldn't work for this, but. 
if we decide to do an art walk again in the future where we work with businesses, maybe we would go up that far on Parment or some, that might be an option. And then she said that she has some really talented um, ballet dancers that she wants to have performance locations for them. And so I was like, well, maybe you could give a performance at Stonehurst Green when it's open. The stage is not that big, but that might be an opportunity. And I, I was actually, I was super impressed. She was talking to me and she's like, well, a lot of my ballet dancers are gone in the summer because they're going to train in Miami, Florida for the summer. And I was like, what <laughs> kind of Middleton parents stuff is this? Like, so it, I don't know. It sounded like I, I was not familiar with her um, with the studio or anything about it, but it sounds like she's got some really talented um, dancers and that they might be able to perform at an event or something or and they're willing and interested in partnering with the arts committee in any way that we can think of hmm. yeah that'd be great for performance art you know we're talking about like the pop-up summer fun things because i love it when they have like either the irish dancers or ballerinas at um concerts on the square downtown madison yeah so that'd be great if we could have something similar it'd be really fun to do just random surprise events too like something like surprise guess what there's a whole bunch of dancers performing here and I don't know that Flash might be mob kind of thing yeah that yeah. might be kind of fun to include into the stone horse green stuff I don't know so we'll see okay so any more updates on art walk I think we covered most things so. That's a lot of work, you guys. And considering this is a different format than years past, correct? The other times it's been businesses that host. And so this is doing a lot of work from scratch. So I'm, I'm excited. It looks really good. I do feel like, I know Rhiannon had brought this up before. I feel like it would be easier if it was a yearly thing and it would just be like part of the cycle of the year. And yeah. After you've done it once and you know where the location is and, you know, it just gets easier and easier. I think that is one of the part, one of the reasons why we aren't getting as many artists is we don't have a name yet. And so uh -huh. if you think of like things like the Angora Art Fair, they have the same artists pretty much every single year and they just have like a following. And <laughs> so we have, to, we have to get to that. And, uh -huh. Yeah. And what to expect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. But Abby needs a a part-time employee in order to make this a yearly thing. <laughs> well, we will have one. It's just been delayed getting posted because our HR person is out. So okay. <laughs> we will have a part-time person that's going to be a year, you know, a continuing limited term employee. So awesome. Yeah. Cool. I think that's it for Art Walk. All right, well then. Does anyone have any questions about that or comments? Um, Megan, I, I can probably do a paper making workshop. At the art walk? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Great. Um, can we, can we pay you though, if you're on the arts committee? Uh, I don't know. I would just need the materials. If we paid um, for the materials, okay. And maybe, so I'm going to have two art interns. I don't know if two gift cards can be given to them to help me. Mm, That'd be awesome. They are, they are middle schoolers. Mm. Um, so I don't know that you can pay them, but I've been giving them gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And That's the library awesome. has been giving them gift cards. So like the visa <laughs> gift cards. Um, okay. So if you could pay for materials and gift cards for my interns. Um, I could do it. Cool. Can you send us a list of what all you need? Yes. Okay. I, will. I know I was going to ask you, but then I was like, I didn't know if we could pay you because you're on the committee and I don't know when your term is up. So yeah, I, at the, at Ulbrick, what I'm doing is the participants are paying, like make they're um, we're going to be doing butterfly, um, plantable butterflies. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm going to be charging $5 for you to be able to make a plantable butterfly okay. at Oberg Gardens. Um, but in this, in this case, I could just, if I could just have the materials and have my intern 
get something. Cool. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. I did um, reach out to the bubbler, Maria, by the way, and they declined this year. But like I said, I feel like once we get more of a name for ourselves, we might get more art communities that want to help us. I also heard back from art working and they said the same thing. They couldn't do it this year. That was more due to like staffing shortages. But oh, for the artwork to, to do some sort of demo? Yeah, to do like a collaboration of some sort. Um, I see. The thing so, with the bubbler is that they're funded by Madison, City of Madison taxpayer dollars. So that might be part of it too. Mm -hmm. That they can't really yeah. do anything outside of the outside of Madison. I don't know. That's a good point. Well, I think one of our problems is, um, you know, Art Walk happened once and then we had a two year hiatus. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so, you know, we're kind of our building from scratch again, I feel like. Mm -hmm. One other mm -hmm. consideration for the future, just as someone who does these shows, is considering a two day show in the future, especially mm -hmm. if we're kind of expanding our radius oh, of yes. where we accept artists from, because if someone's mm -hmm. driving, two or three hours to participate like they really don't want to set yeah. up for six hours and then leave so um I don't know I love the times that like the winter art fair off the square has at Monona Terrace where I think it's like nine to five on Saturday and ten to four on Sunday because it allows everybody to get packed up and home at a reasonable time so okay we'll troubleshoot as the years go on but I think uh, that we a learning can... curve this year yeah. <laughs> Aaron, do you feel like artists are more likely to participate if it's a juried event or does that not play into it? Um, I mean, it kind of sets a standard of what, you know, we discussed this in our little breakout meetings with planning about not having it be overrun by crafty. Like, I think we're building a really good base now because I know myself and other artists have bailed on shows when too much of the you know, crafty stuff creeps in there. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think everything we're doing this year is great. We might want to consider expanding it a little bit in the future, but to Michelle's point, you know, like we did this and then there was nothing for the next two years. So, yeah. so you don't necessarily think that it being juried has anything to do with, or like that we're not having a juried fair. It doesn't have any play in artist decisions. Like a, so I mean, we are, jurying but it's just like our panel you mean like I mean more like artists? getting yeah like getting the awards or whatever for best whatever it is oh yeah yeah I don't think so I mean I don't okay I could care less if I get a blue ribbon on my tent when I'm okay okay <laughs> shows or not people okay. usually just care about what they can sell and their attendance you know and the fact you know like what we're doing with advertising like how well publicized is the event to make sure people attend so Okay, that's good to know. I feel like if we juried it too, we would, I would want us to offer some monetary prizes, not just, you know, a ribbon or a certificate or something. And maybe that's something we could look at in the future. But we are, you know, like Aaron said, we are internally jurying them. We're like not allowing crafters in. And, you know, so I think it just depends on how we want to handle the jurying. Yeah. Like it might be cool in the future to consider involving like local businesses, like getting, you know, Jessica from Regal Find and, you know, John or Christine from John Christine Gallery across the street from them. Um, and, you know, someone from one of the art, you know, like Dunzu Pottery or something. It'd be really cool to get people that kind of represent different parts of the art community mm -hmm. to it also take work off our plate too, right? So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so shall we go on to utility boxes? Sure. Oh. Did anyone else have anything to say about this? Is an Ali. Um, I, I just wanted to ask one question. Um, I think if, if I I think we missed that. Yeah, I, there's no sound. You're cutting out, Sonali. Oh, I was just waiting. I said, um, I wanted to talk um, to, I think it was Meg probably, um, who was sharing that spreadsheet with some artist name. And um, I, I think I, I, I 
appreciate all the hard work you guys are putting in and I was just trying to fill in and what I'm try trying to understand is, so are we still looking for more artists? Is there enough budget to still look for artists or are we done with, I didn't catch that part. Um, maybe if you go back to that sheet or- oh, Yeah, sure. We are still looking for artists. Um, let me see if I, let me show you where, um, if you have anyone who might be interested, I'll show you where to go to look for the form. We actually just decided earlier today to go ahead and extend the deadline because you know we have plenty of space. So okay. Yeah, so um, if you just go to cityofmiddleton.us slash public art, and then if you scroll here to Art Walk Middleton, um, there mm -hmm. is a form which this is right now says March 15th, but I need to change it now to um, April 8th. April 8th, yeah. So I'll get that updated and change the form so that people know that there's still time to apply. I see, and if I need to just run it by one of you in terms of who, like if before I ask that person or the vendor, I wanna make sure is that kind of, us, you know, should should we call any artists? Because some people have that kind of crafts, which is not done um, locally, but it might be more of an export. I mean, should we look into that or not? Um, I think it needs to be original artwork, and they would need to have something to show and to sell. And mm -hmm. if you aren't sure, you can just shoot me an email or Meg. Um, or Aaron or Michelle, and we'll get back to you and let you know what we think if you want. I see. And the, so that person doesn't need to have a Middleton residence, right? It's like, you know, some right. people are in Madison as opposed to, that's okay. Yeah, that's just fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing it. All right, so I pulled up the call for artists for the utility box program, which Kendra and Kendra worked on updating some of the language in this. And then Meg put together some awesome designs um, <laughs> to show, show the spaces. I just have one other quick update on this and that's that um, at the stone horse green, there will be one of these boxes about the same size that is gonna be within the green space. Um, we were trying to find a spot outside of the green and we had a meeting with mg and &E, I think it was last week and we can't, well, there's nowhere else to put it. Um, so it has to be in the main part of the green. It's kind of up against the village green building. So it's not like right in the center or anything, but it's still, in a prominent location. So I think that that would be a good spot to do one of these. And then there's a box that already exists in the brick terrace on the north side of the stone horse green and it will be staying, it's near village green. Um, and those are both mg and &E boxes. And so I met with mg and &E and I asked him about it the, the my contact there and he was like oh I'll have to run it by our marketing department because they're the ones that get to decide whether we can do these wraps or not but then he met with me again and he said um actually as it turns out it's not our marketing department um we don't give permission for these things but we also don't mind if you do it as long as you make this yellow sticker and this white sticker visible so I was like, okay. <laughs> so it sort of seems like they're not gonna permit us to do it, but they're we're gonna still be able to do it somehow, but just not through any formal channels. But there are two stickers on the box. One has a number on it and one has a warning label and both of those have to be visible. Um, so- How big are they? Did you like, are they- um, I didn't measure them, but just eyeballing, uh, I wonder if I could even share, pull up one of them. I would say that the yellow one, it's probably about 10 inches long by three inches tall. And then the white one that's on the side that has like all the warning information, that one is larger. It is, um, 
it's probably a foot by a foot ish. Um, I can go out and get measurements of it. I was out there looking at it today, but I didn't have a tape measure and it was pouring rain. So I didn't hang out there. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think I, if you look at a thing, you, you notice those on the side and they're not huge. So we could probably just leave, like cut out part of the design and just keep it in mind when, I guess that would be an, a question for the artists in, in the group, which is not me. Um, would you wanna know that information before submitting a design? Oh, it's gonna be too far. I I don't know. I personally wouldn't care, but some artists are very uh, touchy about their composition. I mean, it really depends on what you're submitting because if it's I don't know, you know, if it's like a large watercolor, it could detract a lot more from the composition as opposed to like the type of landscapes with oil painting that I do, you know, it wouldn't affect that at all. There's enough detail in other parts that it wouldn't detract. You, you probably wouldn't want to away. submit like, sorry, you probably what? wouldn't want to submit like a portrait or something where, you know, there's like a face completely removed <laughs> in that, but. Yeah, so you can see it really visibly from across the green, but the stage is gonna be in front of it a lot, right? Yeah, that's true. The stage will be here. So you'll be able to see it really well from the sidewalk, but across the green, you won't have a sight line to this. So it's the more other almost, location sorry. though is like, um, here, I need to zoom back out. So there's like planter beds kind of along this side. And the other location is like right here, basically. And that there, there is a bench that will partially obscure it, but the other one where the new one will be installed, it'll be a lot more visible. I think. Mm. Can we maybe in, um, include that in the application and the dimension and the location? Maybe what we need to do is take pictures of each one so that you know they can see the exact spot where the labels will be. Because that will be more work for Meg to add the labels into the drawings. I don't think that we need to have that in the application at all. And if you just have something really vague and say that, um, approximate 12 by 12 area may not be included in the artwork, in the final artwork, because we have to legally have space for these labels. I think you could yeah, just I, reword I think you could just I don't think we need to be so like cut and dry about it. Well, I think if they apply, they need to know where it's going to go. Speaking kind of to what Aaron said, you know, they don't want to put a face right where the label is going to be. I don't, I think that when we select the artwork, we'll be able to figure out which boxes they work on the best. And hopefully most people will, I mean, if you see the ones in Madison, that might be part of our selection process. We haven't figured that out yet. But if you look at the ones in Madison, they're very abstract and colorful and taking a chunk out of it is not deterring from its beauty. So I think as long as this is reworded to state that portions of the artwork may not be visible, I'm not sure how you word that. I, yeah, um, I guess I will point. retract my comment about the composition because at the end of the day, you're paying for the rights. So we could decide to like zoom in and only use a quarter of their yeah. total composition if we want, because we're just buying the rights. So. I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Um, well, uh, when they did the ones placing them too and determining, you know, what, for example, which side is facing the street, and, you know. Yeah. I don't think you need to be too specific with the application. I think once you select the artists, then you can have a conversation with those selected artists. When, uh, when I did the door, project what they did is they just sent me a mock-up of how my artwork is going to look on the door and I had to approve it okay and, but that that conversation happened one after I you know after the selection process I I think you can just be like Megan said a little less specific on the application 
And then you work with the artist to make sure that they're content with how their work is going to look on the utility map. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so if we just let, add like a bullet point that says, you know, electrical utility um, work, uh, notifications and identification information will be will remain and have to be included or you know something to that yes. extent where I just let them know that there's going to be a part of it on there and then leave it at that maybe yeah. just add it to that one bullet point that says obstructions keyholes blah 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 maybe we just you know label okay. contain numeric and safety information or something like that that's mm -hmm. good or labels or something like that yeah and we're yeah, going to make good. We you guys might have discussed this already, but we're going to make like a little plaque for these, right? To have the artist's name visible. Not a plaque, but like it'll actually be printed on these, right? Yeah, it'll say, you know, it'll have the Arts Committee logo. Okay. And then, yeah, it'll state the name. I think we should allow them to have their website too, because if people want to go see more of their stuff. Why not? Yeah. That's our, one of our goals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to suggest. So for the um, for the bike, yeah, the the e bikes that are getting wrapped to in Madison, what they did with that is they sent me the a file similar to the one that with the with the graphics that Megan made, um, and then they gave me the option: Do you want to uh, design? Do you want to? tell us where you want specific images or do you want or you don't care and you want us to do that for you so they gave me that option as well um and then they have also with that email asked me can you provide your artist bio your your photo and all of that information that you might want to market them in the future cool that is such a cool program <laughs> mm -hmm. So, good. so what I hear from you, Maria, then is it's one of those things, once we get the call for artists out there, a lot of this kind of stuff and conversation we can have once the artist is selected. We don't really need to do it at this point, as far as the nuts and bolts of all that. So I think, okay. Um, so <laughs> I would say that we need to get this out there. I know this was one of those things that we talked about in January and then we didn't meet in February. Um, and so we need to approve it now if we wanna get it out to get things by April to discuss at the next meeting on April 21st so we can possibly do this yet this summer. Um, do you wanna consider so, extending the deadline to like the day before our meeting? I don't know, that's less than a month away. It doesn't yeah, I know. Yeah. Maybe, um, do you think that this is something maybe we should implement after Art Walk once we're done with that project? I mean, we can certainly put a call for artists out, but we could put a deadline on it in May. That's true. Don't we have lead time for like printing and actual? Yeah. It'd be better to get it done, get it out there sooner because our budget it's technically a 2022 budget. And if we can't get it done in 2022, we can request a carryover, yeah. but we aren't guaranteed it. I just don't want us yeah. to, to spread everyone too thin. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Let's just make it like whatever the last day is before our meeting next month to give a little bit more. We could, I, yeah, yeah, we could start there, and then if we have to extend it, I guess. Coconut milk. Uh, what yeah, if we went to exactly. April thirtieth? I mean, we would then have some to just. We would ha then have some by that point, probably to to review at our meeting next month. I just think that's a really short turnaround time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of what we did for the art walk, though, and then we just extended it. Like, I figure, let's get it out there, see what we get, and if we need to extend it, we can discuss it then. But 
this this is a far easier process I feel like for artists to commit to because almost any artist has photos of their work that they can just submit that's true. and sending an, an email is like way easier than filling out the form and being like okay can I really like get someone to help me to set up for an art walk type of thing. It's a lot less work on the artist's end. Like I know, you know, it took me what a month to get in my own application for art walk, but I could do this in like 15 minutes. So yeah, that's a good point, Erin. I like that. So what are we going to do the day before our arts committee meeting? Yeah, April 20th. Okay. okay. That's a Wednesday. Give them five more days. Yeah. I, I want to submit something though, and I haven't created it yet. So I got to get my butt together. Uh, that's why you're trying to extend the deadline. <laughs> <laughs> I create it specifically for you guys. <laughs> cool. I'm just looking here. Yeah, that was only in a couple of spots. I think we got it. Yeah. And if you just Meg, you should do Meg, you should do some kind of graphic of Abby's idea with having the whole like Middleton Hollywood sign. Mm -hmm. I love it. I have I'm so ideas. in for that, Abby. We got to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what else do we need to discuss in regard to utility boxes? I don't know. I think, do we have to take a vote and approve this? I don't know the process very well. Do we need to? I think you should. Okay. Okay. So do I will move that we, with the changes that Abby will make, she'll remove the strike throughs. Yeah. Um, that remain. And then with the deadline of April 20th, the night before our next meeting, I will make a motion to accept this call for artists. We have and a second. Submit it and Put it in the world. I think we've got a second. So is that ever like? Yeah, did somebody second already? I can second. Oh. I don't think anyone did. Oh, okay. sorry. I thought I, I thought you did, Michelle. Sorry. No, but I will. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard second somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> Where are you guys posting this? Is it just going to be on like the city Facebook page or what's the plan? I think the best way to get it out is probably um, our list that we have, because there are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of artists there. But I could send it to Arts Wisconsin and post it on the city Facebook, um, ask you all yeah. to share it, notify me. Yeah, if we get it on Facebook, we can share it in groups. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Should we have like, a flyer that we post in certain locations like Gary's Art and Frame, some of those other places we've talked about, like the. Oh, uh, come on. Maria, are you talking to us or are you? Shut, to no, you? that was not to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, a lot of people don't look at posters anymore. I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I was talking to my blender. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> husband is laughing. <laughs> um, just a random thought, not to drag on this conversation more, but it might be a cool idea to consider, like, allowing at least one of them to be like a children-led rap, like if the art teachers in an elementary middle school, you know, like we're able to create something like the mural that we could actually put on there. Like that would be really cool just that would be super for the variety cool. and for the, you know, the community ties. Or a Girl Scout troop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to here oh. in cookies, so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you but anything? I am leading our art badge at the beginning of April. So that's a possibility. <laughs> oh. Um, are you thinking we would designate a spot in advance or just to promote it and welcome and accept um, submittals from students and kids? I don't know. Yeah, kind of both, I guess, just to 
get a variety out there. Like I love looking at the, um, you know, the art, the, the gutter program stuff that you get people involved in in the community. It'd be really great if we could mm -hmm. include the kids somehow. I don't know. I'm kind of circling on this, but. Except for the wording, I think said 18 and older. So it'd have to be reworded. Well, if yeah, we send a special, only. if we send a special invitation to, uh, I mean, right, we as a, as we as a committee, can we not extend a special invitation to a program or if it's like the Middleton Youth Center or anything like that to, to ask for them to do something? I think you could, but if you make it so targeted and specific, you would probably need to accept whatever they submit. Yeah. You know, I mean, it might be awkward if you ask them to do something special and then they do it and you're like, oh, not what we were thinking. <laughs> well, my my thought process was if we do something with the stone field or the stone horse green and we say, OK, here's the size of box you have. Your parameters are stone horse green. That's what that's your design idea. Go from there. Brainstorm with the kids. So that way it kind of you give them like loose parameters and then we would have a designated space an idea that fit with the theme of the space. Is the stone yeah. horse screen counted as one of the 10 that we're supposed to be doing this year? I think we should include it on the list because just because it's so prominent. Um, I did have an idea for that though, because I think I mentioned it. I can't remember who I mentioned it to. It was probably one of our, it was our downtown alder person. And she was like, oh, but I feel like if if it is gonna be down there, then it should fit the theme, kind of like what Kendra's saying. And I was like, well, you know, what we could do is we could get the original drawings that Gail and Eris did. I actually have them saved as a file, but we'd need to obviously get their permission for the, the horses. Um, Cause they drew them out like on paper first and we could then have that be the wrap. And then we could like, you know, be like, here's the process that they use to create the work or something like that um or you could know. do a really cool like abstract collage with all the different like schematics of the different piece like that would be cool yeah, yeah. Them. yeah. that's a cool idea yeah but yeah that's not included yeah, in part of our 10 and so i don't know if that's included in the budget then too right because I, I think that would take us to 12 then okay so you've got 10 for sure that you know are the ones that we're working on well, that we have, I think, right now in the budget, yeah. In the document. Are they oh. specific, though? Specific Sorry? Locations? Is it specific locations or just 10? It's specific locations. Okay. The well, ones we that were identified before. But that doesn't mean that I, those were just what was suggested. I, I mean, we can. We could alter that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for the kids thing, I was kind of thinking you give them a direction of like, you know, things I love about Middleton so that they can create, you know, all their little favorite spots in there. So it's mm -hmm. all tied in and then it would fit in whatever location it's put at. I love that idea, but I think we might need to hold off on that for like another project and have that as like a separate, like maybe we identify another utility box that's not included in the, the next project. round. Because yeah, it seems that like works too. It has some things we still need to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move forward with these first 10. Let's get those off. Like we said, we need to have like a little bit of time to work out the kinks. And then after we get these done, then maybe we can have a specific like kid call for the other ones. Maybe they're all on Century Avenue, or maybe they're the ones by the schools. I don't know. We have to figure that out still. But well, and if we get these okay. done in time for like July or August, we could submit another budget request and we could be like, hey, we found these three more and, and it's even lower this time. And this time we're going to involve kids. So, you know, we could keep, I mean, there's a capital budget process every year. And so you could ask for more funds to do another round. That's a good idea. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Let's move forward as is, and then we'll consider a second round. Okay. I am not trying to cut discussion short here, but we're already an hour in and I'm going to have to leave when my husband gets home because we're going to dinner tonight. <laughs> so I'm going to push us along here. Yes. Okay. Good idea. Okay. So 
let's we already had our motion so we have a a motion by kendra and seconded by myself all in favor aye aye all opposed all right so the motion carries and we are moving on to self-made man yeah so did, did, you look, did you see in your packets that the the it looked as though the cost had gone down on the repairs from around 15 to 13,000 do we have a date for this repair abby we i know um, the she said has summer okay. she hasn't set a date i did she, i don't know if you noticed in her submittal that she was concerned about how the city attorney would take some of the items in there cuz it's different than what a museum would include in their contract and i sent it over to him um there was one item that she was totally fine taking out. Um, and it was like the late payment thing that our attorney won't let us include any of that for city projects. It's just standard in contracts and we always have to strike it. Um, and then the other items, I kind of went back and forth with him and um, explained everything. And I think that he's going to be supportive. So I think we're going to get, we're going to be able to go forward. It's not, it is definitely not a standard contract that we would normally approve. But I explained that, you know, we reached out to about a dozen art conservators trying to get somebody who would do the project. There were limited people available. The person that we had, we had her under, we've had her under contract for about a year. Um, she hasn't been able to do it because she fell ill. There's a whole history. So he was okay um, with approving it. So if you all approve it tonight, I will put it on the Common Council agenda for final approval and we can move ahead. So questions? We've been talking about this for a long time. I trust Megan, so I know she's gonna do a great job. Yeah, totally agree. So do we have a motion? I would move to approve the proposal. I will second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, solar bration. Um, okay, so the sustainability committee is having a solar bration, which is a celebration of their solar arrays that they got installed on three city buildings, and they're now active. And one of the buildings is the new Lakeview Park shelter, the renovated shelter, and they're having a big event and they heard about the arts committee doing um, kids activity tables and they would like to see if you'd be willing to have one at their event. It's on July, I think it's the 24th. Okay. So this I'm, is separate from the stuff I committed us to or myself to and hope to have helpers at Lakeview Park then. <laughs> yours was for the days off school, right? And, yeah, in August, I had to give Rebecca an answer because we didn't meet last month. And I committed to four days in August. Um, just knowing what I could cover and hoping to find helpers. <laughs> well, in July, I should be able to, um, I should be able to attend. It's only one day if I can get somebody else there with me. Are we doing, we're not doing pop-up summer fun, right? Because it's going to be under construction. Uh, I got a different version of that with Parks and Rec that I committed two and again in hopes of having other people join me but I oh, can okay, cover them okay. if so not. that's what you're talking about it's like pop-up summer fun but it's an alternate version because stonehorse green is under construction when, abby when yeah. do you make a decision when do you need to make a decision yeah can we table this till next month um you can if you want i'm staffing the sustainability committees meeting on monday so i can just let them know that we talked about it but um, you weren't ready this to is, you have several others. Yeah, I think we need this to is July 24th. It's uh, a yes. Sunday then, right? Sunday? Oh. Hmm. I, I, can, also... I mean, I can I can commit now and honestly, we have enough supplies under my stairs right here left over from the pop-up summer fund that we could easily do a, a table and create something. 
Yeah, I'm sure I could help with something too. Well, yeah, I'm, I will be able down. to help in July, I think. So I think be, I, by then we should be able to drum up two or three people to, yeah, to work. Like we can make table up the... a budget decision for the next meeting maybe, but I think that we can easily commit to having one or two people there, right? Okay, well, I'll, um, I think that's something we can work out later. I mean, it won't be that expensive to do an art project for one day. Mm -hmm. Do we need a motion on this or? No, I can just let them know that you um, supported it and you'll do something. You'll figure something out, out for it. It'd okay. be cool to have like a recycled art project or something along. Paper mache. Ooh, I love paper mache. <laughs> Have you guys seen those um, bottle cap art? I know it would be, be a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. I want to totally make one of those somewhere. Send, yes. send me it. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I'll send it to you. We'd have to really start collecting bottle caps. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, so shall I... we move on to six? Yes. All right. Start. Donation button and roundabout funds. I don't have an update on this item. Okay. All right. So shall we move on then to Youth Center? Sure. Okay. Um, sorry to interrupt. I have to drop right now. This is Sonali. Um, we'll catch up with you next month. Thank you for everyone. So we will um, no longer have a quorum. Hi, Sonali. Right? Yeah, oh, I don't. think if she leaves, we don't have a quorum. Wait, Brian, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Ah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Brian. Okay. all right. So we're good with the quorum. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Wait, do, wait, you're going to have me decide Thanks. something as the, oh boy, this is not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you, you want to wait till the next meeting to introduce yourself so we can see your lovely face, Brian? Okay, I'm going to try to get my lovely face on there. <laughs> Where's my... Uh... Well, whatever you got, you know, keep, keep going with your agenda. I I've been listening all along. This is great. I, you know, this is my uh, first uh, uh, involvement in this, but yeah, no, no, keep going with your agenda. Yeah, we, we can, we can do that some other time. Okay. Maybe we'll have our meeting in person next month. Who knows? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we should have it at long table though. <laughs> yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Okay, Michelle, I'm going to move on to Youth Center. I'm going to say, I already said we're trying to get this project done and wrapped up um, before the art walk. The only other thing I would add is the kids did not like doing a big project. They have asked to do smaller projects. They, two of the <laughs> things they kept bringing up were tie-dye and clay. Mm. So um, they would prefer smaller projects next time. Okay. So okay. that's the only thing I have for that, really. We're just chugging along on these buildings yeah when is your next um time there the first wednesday in april i don't know off the top of my head the fifth or fourth or something and then i'll be going back at the end of april because i will be gone the first uh, wednesday of may okay i just want to come back and take more pictures okay all right so that's all I have on that. And we are next, the update on artists in Middleton display at Stonehorse Green. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make sure you all were aware of this and you were okay with this because I'm planning to use the artists in Middleton logo and mention that this is sponsored by the arts committee. <laughs> so I thought you should okay it. Um, it's the construction fencing, the temporary construction fencing around the site, which will be installed in a couple weeks. Um, on the long table side, so the south side, we were gonna have some pieces um, displayed, just printed right onto the fabric. And then we'll, we're, we have this little, um, it looks like a frame, like a picture frame around each of the pieces and then on the left-hand side, it says it has the Artists in Middleton logo that Meg um, put together. And then beneath it, it says, this is a temporary art display um, to, to show work of artists who live in the city of Middleton. So this is only city of Middleton artists. 
And um, we did a quick call um, just using the Artisan Middleton listserv that we have. And um, we received submittals and it would be a total of nine pieces that would be shown. Um, and most of them are from individual artists, but there were one, two, three that would be from two pieces from one artist. Um, and I'm just paying them $25 each because I don't really, I, I'm gonna use the stone horse green budget for it um, for part of the construction fencing. So it's a pretty minimal payment, but we just thought it would be a cool opportunity to show some artwork outdoor there, outdoors there temporarily. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I totally missed this call, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was looking, there, uh, Aaron Summers artwork on there. I, was looking for your I name. sent it to you, Aaron. I sent it to you and Maria. I think I probably flagged it and lost it in the cookie madness, so. Uh -huh. Well, if you can get us <laughs> something I tomorrow. It, but I didn't respond to it right away and then I forgot to respond to it. <laughs> Yeah, oh, well, we can still if you submit. Have time, send us something tonight or tomorrow. There's still time. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, we yeah, thought that we were in a bigger wrong. hurry than we were because the construction fencing company we were going to use originally had a long lead time, but then the one that we got in touch with more recently only requires a week. And Daphne has it mostly laid out and ready to go. But if you have something, okay. still send it over because there's still space. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that's gonna look so cool. I'm glad that it's just not gonna be big blank spaces. That was a really good idea yeah. to do that. Me too. Sorry, my dog is singing. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. <laughs> All right. Um, so do we need so a the only... on this or no, I don't take a vote. So. I really don't know what I'm doing here and conducting. <laughs> 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 okay well, I think Abby just you just wanted to make us aware right it's nothing that needs action yeah, and just I wanted to make sure I mean the artist in Middleton is your program um so I just wanted to make sure that you all were okay with it but I'm not asking you to spend any of your money so I think it's a great idea especially if we don't have to yeah. spend our own money <laughs> yes always best um, I know this is not an agenda item, but just so everybody knows what I committed myself slash hopefully us to is um, Monday, Wednesday in August, the 15th, 17th, 22nd, and 24th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Lakeview Park for pop-up summer fun. So hey, can we can those maybe- dates again? I'm sorry. Sorry, it's um, their Monday, Wednesdays because it wasn't available on Friday. So August 15th, mm -hmm. August 17th, okay. August 22nd, okay. and August 24th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Okay. My goal is to have something for both the like zero to six age group and then also something for like the Older. seven to 12-ish age group to do. Mm -hmm. um I'm sure my work will sponsor things again I have two co-workers that are willing to also like help out um but if we can put it on next month's agenda to kind of approve for budgetary concerns and then we can get some sponsors and make it fun but the purpose in those dates is that all of the um parks and rec kind of programs terminate on the August 12th with kids returning to sports and things before school starts so they don't have instruction and kids are kind of at a loss of mm -hmm. things to do so why don't we change in inventory our, our supplies too and see what we're going to need to purchase yeah i don't know if this would be worth looking into but um it would be kind of cool if we made these more of a collaboration with another business in middleton like dongzu and maybe they could do like a pinch pack class or something like that with the kids where we're paying them yeah. to be there to lead the classes. Um, yeah, that would be great. And I've talked to my work too for this is mainly for the older group, clearly, but to be doing architectural stuff, whether that's actual like 3D model making or if it's getting into, um, you know, the actual plans. We have one of our architects that was trained at Taliesin, so it'd be really cool to get him in there and 
share that stuff as you know it's like career building things slash art for the kids so mm -hmm. yeah I'm trying to Ooh. brainstorm all of that so I think that all these ideas are great and if that could be really good the agenda, for the youth center next year too yeah yeah so okay cool all right so let's put that on the agenda then for next meeting okay. yep I'll do that sorry I forgot Aaron <laughs> no no it's all good all right so do we have anything else on our agenda abby that was it all right do we have a motion to adjourn that uh motion gave a wave yeah okay yeah <laughs> all right okay, <laughs> okay. one second i'll second, second it so michelle can get to dinner okay i'm sorry <laughs> i rushed you guys there at the end no this was great thank you all yep. right. Thanks for the update, everyone. Good See y'all later. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good dinner. <laughs>